Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great. And for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. Today we're back with our VGC Series 10 content and featuring a Duskmane Necrozma team. Now Duskmane is a Pokemon that we've already featured on the channel, but in a completely different build. This time we're actually featuring it with what is flavor of the week at the moment in Pelipper. Pelipper, really good Pokemon with the flying and water typing. It deals super well with things like Incineroar and Rillaboom. Uh, it provides speed control as well so we've got that aspect that we can take advantage of in this team as well as the trick room so um kind of pairing up with the kingdra for that fast mode with the swift swim there to give you a really explosive mode from the start you've got that stability in the incineroar and rillaboom the kind of mainstays in pretty much most teams in this format and then in dd which kind of pairs up nicely with the dustman necrozma providing that psychic terrain support to negate uh priority attacks fake out and things like that and offers really direction as well as a way to kind of override opposing terrains if they are a little bit annoying so this is the team i hope uh, you enjoyed today's episode we will as always throw up the rental code at the end of the episode there will be a poker paste down below if you'd like to check that out and try the team out for yourself and uh, as always if you do try the team out please let me know down in the comment section how you got on with it uh, what your thoughts are if or if it inspired any ideas with uh, teams going forward in VGC. So without further ado, friends, let's get into today's first battle. Okay, first up today, we have a Zashin Incineroar Rillaboom, Galarian Zapdos, Suicune, and Reggie Alecki team. Pretty solid looking team, a good one for us to kick off with against today. Uh, predominantly going to be Tailwind support in this team, uh, outside of Electroweb there, the only kind of speed control methods for my opponent. So Trick Room really feels quite appealing for us here uh the reggie lecky going to cause us a few issues of course especially if we wanted to go down that kind of rain route um which we may do you know for the trick room it kind of would work in a certain sense but we'd also be powering up the sweet coon at the same time which might not be the best thing but we do have rillaboom to kind of fall back on in that situation if we need to um i think pretty much what we need to try and do is avoid necrozma getting like intimidate spammed like over and over again it might be all right like we could get the trick the thing is it's it's a little bit of a, a double-edged sword we need necrozma on the field to get the trick room up um so i think like necrozma and dd feels really solid as a lead they could bring out zashin that's the only trouble that's the only thing i could say they could bring out zashin um and it could cause us a few issues whereas we could do we want to go with we want our own incinero i think we want pelipper as well so, oh, let's go Ndidi. I kind of want Pelipper, but we'll bring Ndidi in the back because they do have their own terrain. So they may lead with something like Rillaboom here. Um, just to override our Psychic terrain. We've got Fake Out, so we can set up our Trick Room pretty safely here. Uh, and it gives us a way to kind of get around the opposing Zashian substituting. Sorry, I'm like looking at my window here and I can see a house over the road and it looks like there's like an old man staring at me kind of weird it's kind of weird I'm probably not staring at me it's probably they're probably yeah I'm just being paranoid anyway we see Suicune and we see the Galarian Ultra so guarantee we're going to see something like uh raw on the uh the Suicune for sure um we kind of want Indeedee on the field and we don't want to leave like we could just double up into the Zapdos with a Photon Geyser and a Fake Out. That could completely work. And if the Suicune decides to go for the roll, then at least we get the attack off into... Um, okay, they're not going to do that. Incineroar coming out and getting that Intimidate on. So we could have went for the Trick Room. Um, kind of suspecting that they haven't got the roll there then. Potentially. And also it was in a bad it was in a bad spot as well because you know um the fact that we uh have fake out as well and grassy terrain grassy glide makes it a little bit difficult now um i think we're in a good spot now to actually set our trick room up and then just switch straight into indeed day indeed day because then the expanding force deals with the Zapdos the next turn. There's not really much threat of Necrozma going down here. And I think the Incineral feels probably more inclined to go for a fake out to give it a little bit, like the, the Zapdos, a little bit of room against the, uh, the Necrozma. So, 
See, there's the fake out. And the Brave Bird will be into DD. But we'll take this. We're pretty bulky. No recoil, I'll actually just take it down and then we get the Trick Room set up. So we're in a good spot. Only issue is um, that we have um, been intimidated, which isn't ideal. But we'll see. We'll see what we can do. The only reason I'd like to have brought the Pelipper here would have been for the Incineroar, you know. Um, but unfortunately, that is not ideal. Uh, I mean, we could potentially bring Rillaboom in. Because I kind of want to lay off bringing um, Incineroar on the field yet. Because we know there's Ashians in the back, right? So if I make this switch here, we reset the Intimidate. They may go for a Flare Blitz. And the double up, if they Flare Blitz, Scald, then then DD goes down. It opens the door for Necrozma to come back in. Full power and uh, we'll be able to kind of go from there. Only issue is having Earthquake with the Grassy Terrain up is a little bit uh, counterintuitive, you know. So you kind of want to have the Psychic Terrain up in that situation. But there's not a great deal. We, can, oh, we should have just stayed in. Should have stayed in. And got that weakness policy boost. But at least we know Snarl's potentially there the next turn. Scald should take us down now. Ugh, it doesn't. Okay. Well. We do have the option where we could potentially just U-turn. I think U-turn into Incineroar. And then switch into Necrozma here. Because I think this week we can switch us out to Zashin. Okay. They cancel the battle. Did they not have Zashin? Okay. So we might get a few more games in today. Don't understand the cancellation, to be honest. Because they've still got a lot they could play for. Anyway. Good start to the, the episode, of course. We'll move on now to game two of today's today's video. Up next today, we have a Kyogre, a Dusclops, a Reggie, a Lecky, Entai, Torkoal, and a Mianxiao. So, a double weather team with Kyogre bringing the rain, Torkoal bringing the sun. Um, Interesting, because ooh, the rain mode here isn't actually too bad. Again, we've got to watch out for things like the Reggie Alecki. We don't mind the Trick Room going up too much because of the Necrozma there. I guess we'd have to watch out for something like um, the Trick Room going up, Torkoal on the field. That wouldn't be ideal, but as long as we've got kind of Pelipper in the back, we kind of need to keep that in mind throughout this game. Uh, that should be enough to kind of help us out. Um, so, what components are we going to need in this match? I feel like Rillaboom's just an absolute beast. Uh, um, do I want to lead rain though? I could lead rain. I could lead rain. Um, do we just lead rain and then have boom necrozma in the back? Because do we need incineral? Not necessarily. Um. I don't really want to lead rain. I don't want to lead rain now. I want to keep the rain in the back, I think, because we want to be able to change the weather. If we lead with rain, we're kind of locked in where my opponent's got the opportunity to, to lead the tall call or switch it in and kind of dictate the play from there. So let's see. I had some good teams today so far, so hopefully that continues. What's my opponent leading with? Entai and Aleki. Okay. Well, hmm. The rain would have been better. Better. I don't know if we want to set the trick room up. We can't. One option we do have is we could potentially go for. Huh. Like, where are they going to target? Are they going to target into Duskman? Are they going to target into Rillaboom? Um, we can only fake out the Regilecki, right? So, we could potentially switch into Pelipper and got Earthquake. 
or you could trick room but then that sets up the talk hole and i'm not really super keen on doing that right now yeah i think we earthquake because if they if they sacred fire dusk main right if they sacred fire dusk main this works out actually perfect for us so the the, the aleki was scared of the fake out so they switch into talk hole so we'll be able to overwrite our uh, over the overwrite the sun um yeah, if they sacred fire us and burn us, then the weakness policy kind of overrides that burn anyway, so kind of mitigates the burn. So the, the earthquake will be able to do. Ooh, eruption, what? <laughs> eruption anti. Well, we'll take that all day because that just puts us to plus two, and this earthquake's going to absolutely obliterate or do a good chunk of damage to everything on the field, which is a nice, nice combo. Obviously, the grassy terrain being up doesn't help us one little bit. Um, weakness policy tall call, huh? Well, we're in a good spot where we can actually probably earthquake here. We can, uh, sorry, we can trick room here and, and go for a, a scald into the tall call. Unless they do switch the tall call out, which they may do, which we could just probably then just go for a scald into tall call. But this tall call, tall call has to switch. Tall call has to switch. Do we just go Earthquake, Scald, into the Talk Hall slot? Because they, we still got a good switch. Yeah, I think we just go for that. Because they may just be locked into Eruption. I don't think they've got a strong enough attack now to take down Duskmane with Entai. Um, a Grassy Terrain super conflicting. Like, if the Grassy Terrain wasn't up here. Again, it's like really conflicting. Um... Which is a little bit annoying. Uh, Entai switches out. What's coming in? What's coming in? We're we just going to see the protect on the talk hall. Aleki. Do you even take this though? Okay, well, we see the protect. Does Aleki take this? I don't know if it does. I didn't expect the Entai. Entai must be scarfed. It takes it. Okay. Uh, well, we just get Boom onto the field. Switch Pelipper out for... Boom. And then... I mean, we could Earthquake again, but we're probably better off going for the Photon Geyser into the Talk Hall this turn. Uh, just to make sure that we do remove it. We should take an attack from Aleki, depending on if it's specs or not. You know, the the, the way that it's switched out, turn one, kind of makes you think, mm, is it specs? But again, maybe not as well, because you can see the play where the eruption goes off and the sun comes in, so it makes a lot of sense in that respect. But the Torque are going to switch out, which is fine. This is the Entai. It's a Kyogre. Ooh, bye bye, Kyogre. Ba -a, ba 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 you big whale. <laughs> it's gone. Don't mind the speed drop too much. Yeah, Kyogre not surviving this. Nope. Uh, we could see Entai come back in, I mean, but we still got the play where we can we can just switch to, to Pelipper. We can grassy glide into the Reggie Alecki slot. Um, so we're in a good good little spot right now so let's see what comes in Torkoal yeah, I mean we still got active fake out We just need to remove the Aleki from the field. I feel like Aleki stays in. We could just make the safe play, you know, and just fake out into Torkoal uh, and just Earthquake again. Because they may go for a Thunderbolt, but I, I still think we'll take it. I think we'll take the Thunderbolt. Vault switch and Entai coming in and Entai going to take an absolute chunk of damage and then in the next turn we can switch the Pelipper in which is a little bit safer you know so so 
Scarfed Entai. Yeah, and the Torkoal pretty pretty useless now. And like the the thing is, I think if if you were confident um, with the Aleki taking down um, the Necrozma, that turn I think it would have stayed in and Thunderbolted. I don't think you would have switched to Entai. But you can see the the team has the capabilities of kind of pinning pinning opponents down. Where we now we can just I know we'll lose Pelipper right, but it doesn't really matter at this stage where we can switch to Pelipper because then we've got like Kingdra to come in or we've got uh, Rillaboom to come back in. Um, and it just makes sure with the rain up, it makes sure that uh, we can we can take an attack from the, the Torkoal. And I don't think with the speed drop, we would have undersped it anyway. Um, so very good game to my opponent. Another nice one and we'll hop in. We'll have one more today, friends, one more. So we'll be right back into game three of today's episode. Okay, our third and final opponent today is up and they have some spice. They've got Doug Trio, they got Amoongus, Rillaboom, Volcarona, Nihiligo and Eveltal. So Doug Trio, definitely an, an odd and random pick here. Um, yeah, not something we see too often, but quite interesting nonetheless. I feel like like speed control on my opponent's team, they got a potentially trick room on the Nihiligo. Uh Tailwind, I believe, on Nuveltal. Does it get Tailwind still? I'm pretty sure I should know this. I should know this. Um So they got a bit of flexibility. A rain mode does pretty well here, because really Kingdra Pelipper is a lead, hits everything pretty hard. Um the big thing that I would worry about would be the Eveltal. Uh, I think out of everything, it does cause us a few issues. Um, but even doubling up from like Kingdra Pelipper into it, as long as it's not a Salt Vest, gives us a good kind of uh, means to to deal with it at least. Um, I think because the Amoongus, if we go down a Trick Room route, which is not a bad idea, like the Trick Room route feels decent. Um, the one thing I would worry about would be Amoongus, so we'd need Ndidi with the the uh, the safety goggles there. Um, so I think to l end this last one, we'll go Pelipper, Kingdra, Necrozma, and DD. Yeah, let's do that. The Veltal is going to be difficult. Veltal is always going to be a difficult matchup for a uh, Necrozma team, especially when we haven't got a Fairy type in our squad to help us out, at least, or an Electric type. To say the least, so but we can we can get around it. I don't know if we'll see the Nile League in this match, it doesn't really make much sense. Uh, Doug Trio makes a little bit of sense, but it has a hard time against the rain mod for sure. Um, okay, so Rilla and Veltal. I mean, we can just double protect here. Gotta watch out for the grass, the, the grassy glide as well, you know. Um, what item is the boom holding? The other thing, what we could potentially do is just switch straight into something like Ndidi. And just go for... I mean, do we... Yeah, I think go Ndidi. And then... Could hurricane into well we could drop a Draco. I mean we could just muddy water here. We're not gonna do that much damage to the Rillaboom, but we get a bit of damage onto it and probably get enough damage onto the Veltal to get it with a get it with a Draco the next turn potentially. But I'd imagine we'll probably see Skull, uh, Snarl come up from the Veltal. Maybe. But they, there's no way they suck a punch here. So there's a fake out. So, a snarl is what I expect. Yeah. Critical hit on the boom is useful, because it's probably in hurricane range. And the snarl does hit, yeah. Not great. Oof. 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 Does so much damage. Does so much damage. Um... I think what we'll try and do is we'll get we'll drop the Draco onto the Veltal now because that's the biggest like the thorn in our side you know if if we can get the Veltal down to good good HP number then that helps us out massively 
Now you need go. I'd imagine we'll see another Snarl here. And that'll be enough to get the Kingdra. They Sucker Punch. Why are they Sucker Punching? We've got Redirection. And we've got the Psychic Terrain up. I mean, that does nothing. They are Assault Vest. 100% Assault Vest. Hmm. Now they've got Meteor Beam for sure. And I think we need Indeedy more than anything else. So I feel a little bit more inclined like to bring in... I don't want to bring Pelper. I mean, we could bring in Necrozma here. And just go for another Muddy Water. Because if they Snarl again, that's ideal for Necrozma, to be honest. And the Muddy Water damage onto the Kingdra will be useful. Um... I mean, they may suck a punch and bring Rillaboom in on the Nihiligo slot, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen now. Get the Muddy Water, we do hit. We got minus three, so we're not doing very much damage at all. The accuracy drops, if any, are really useful. She don't get any. Uh, Meteor Beam. This is going to be into Necrozma. Have they not got... No, they must have. Yeah, they got. They have to have the, the, the item. They have to, yeah. This is into Kingdra and we see like a foul player, this would be bad for us. I'm hoping it's a snarl. Now they do get the beast boost, but what's an oblivion ring? Okay, so that's that's way better, because we resist that. So that's good. Although we don't get our weakness policy boost. The issue is going for something like Indeedee now is the Night Legal gets a kind of the free hit. Um But I mean we get that we get the trick room up regardless, right? I think what we could potentially do is protect Indeedy and then go for the Sunsteel Strike into the Eveltal. Because I think they're going to target, they, like with Nihiliga, they have to target the Ndidi, right? So they take down the Ndidi and then probably foul play this main Necrozma. Or they may go for a Snarl. I don't know. Like a Snarl is the best case scenario, but I'm not worried about the Nihiliga at this point. We don't need to worry. And then we got the, the Follow Me Trick Room play to kind of go with after that. Um, and if not, we do have a switch to Pelipper while they bring in the Rillaboom. Okay. So, Felto gonna switch. Ooh, Volcarona coming in, which makes sense. So they're gonna try and flame body us. Oh, we could have trick roomed here. We could have trick room. We can trick room the next turn, for sure. We just don't want this burn. We just don't want the burn. This is a tough, toughy, toughy game. But if we get the trick room up now, I think like we're in such a good spot. Ah, oh, come on. That is not what we want to see. That is not what we want to see. <laughs> no. We need a weakness policy to overwrite that. It's not ideal, uh, but we can Earthquake. Uh, no, we need to Trick Room. We need to Trick Room. 100% Trick Room. And we need to... Um, I don't even know if they keep Nihiligo on the field. They probably do and just get rid of the, the, the DD. What's going to be better for us? Like, is the grassy terrain going to be better? And the psychic terrain going to be better? Because we can bring in Pelipper, but Pelipper will go down to a combination. I mean... We could also just go for a re follow me, follow me, or a heal pulse. I worry about Rage Powder, though. That that would be the big kind of kicker. Let's just follow me and stay in. Because they may switch Nihiligo out. They're not. They're going to just take down the DD. But that's... That's fine. Quiver Dance. Okay. Oh, we got the Earthquake, we can go with the next turn, once the Trick Room's up. That's actually better for us. 
especially with the grassy terrain not on the field. And we kind of got the cover as well with Pelipper where we can cover if the Rillaboom from my opponent comes in. Because an Earthquake will take down... An Earthquake will take down the Nilego. Um, and I, I would expect an Earthquake Scald, Rain Boosted, to take down the, the, um, the Volcarona. And they're probably going to... Uh, are they going to Rage Powder? I doubt. I doubt it. I doubt it. So it's not over yet, but it's still pretty tricky. It's pr pretty tight margins here. Just got to hope an Earthquake will be enough to get the Nine Ligo. <laughs> I'd worry a little bit about the Nine Ligo surviving and maybe the Rillaboom coming in for something like Nine Ligo. Um, okay, we need this to take. We need this to take down the Nine Ligo. If it does, then we're we're in business. Okay, not doing very much that Volcarona. Um, but if a Skull can take this this Volcarona down, it has got the Quiver Dance boost though, so it makes it a little bit more tricky. Oh, it's so close! It's so close. You redance. Are you going into Necrozma? Give us that weakness policy boost. So resetting the um, resetting the uh, the old burn damage, which is good. The issue is sucker punch um, on the Evelta, which makes it a little bit more tricky because we're probably in sucker punch range. Although it is a salt vest, so it's not like the most offensive thing. Could we take a sucker punch? Maybe, maybe not. Problem is now with the boom coming in, it's got access to its fake out, so we have to we have to to protect the turn, but we can't protect with Necrozma. Um, so I think what we'll do is we will for hmm, Sunsteel Strike into the Volcarona. Um. Do we just double into Volcarona? Because they're going to fake out. They're going to fake out, I think. The, the other thing is, like, we could just Hurricane into the Rillaboom because then we punish if they fake out into Duskmane, right? Okay. They may Grassy Glide here, that's the thing. And a Hurricane punishes that play. No, they... Okay. That's fine. Are we going to be able to take a, a Grassy... Yeah, we should take a Grassy Glide from this range. We need to Sunsteel Strike the, the Volcarona slot just because... Um, now Hurricane definitely takes the Rillaboom down. It's just in case the, 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 the Volcarona switches out to Valtel, so we want to be able to at least get damage onto the Valtel if it does decide to switch in. How many turns of Trick Room have we got left? Two. Not, not many. Not many. We could Tailwind on our last turn of Trick Room, which would probably be... A really good play. If we can get rid of the Rillaboom here, that's that's huge for us. Since you strike, Hurricane into the boom. As long as they haven't got the call button, as long as we can take a grassy glide, then we're all right. Which we do, which is good. Since your strike will be enough, should be enough to get the Volcarona. It's not like super defensively bulky. We've seen the damage done already. That is enough. Don't need to worry about the burn just about this hurricane if we can get the hurricane knockout here that's huge for us yeah okay we've got one turn of trick room against an assault burst battle which is ah. it's gonna suck a punch it's gonna suck a punch us just suck a punch and win it's like why well, we need to Scald burn it almost. It's good. It has to lock into Sucker Punch. I think we could Trick Room here. Ah, it's just we could Trick Room and Tailwind. And that negates the entire Sucker Punch. It's just if they don't, then.
No, I think we Tailwind in Trick Room here because we'll reverse the Trick Room on the last turn of Trick Room and then set ourselves up with Trick Room and it avoids any sort of Sucker Punch. Yeah. So we set the Tailwind up. We put ourselves into a better spot the next turn. But like Double Sucker Punch will be the, the thing that is... Uh, <sighs> I downfall. It's whether or not Necrozma can take a Sucker Punch from this range. Because I think a Sensor Strike probably would get the Eveltal. And then it would be whether or not we can get a Scald Burn. Let's do it. Let's see where they go. They're going to go after the Necrozma, I think. Yeah, there's no reason for them not to. We take it. We take it. Necrozma is an absolute beast. I love Necrozma. We get the Burn as well, just to boot. No Burn. But... I think we got it now. Like I say, the weakness policy kind of negates the, the burn, so puts us to neutral. This should be enough. And it is. There we go. Okay. Good game to my opponent. And what a game for us to end on today, friends. What a game to end for us. Uh, we'll be right back in a moment, friends. Very good game to my opponent. And I'll get this rental code for you all so you can try it out for yourselves. Here is today's rental code. I hope if you try the team out, you have a lot of fun with it. Obviously, we've... I went through a bunch of matches, a bunch of matchups against pretty kind of standard meta teams at the minute. So the teams performed pretty well. The last game was a great one to finish on as well. Um, and we've got to see most of the elements of the team in today's episode, which is always nice to see. Um, that's made across my really good option. You know, we're seeing Pelipa played a lot with Zash in at the minute, which makes a lot of sense. But I do feel like Dusk Man across my kind of falls into the same sort of category where it benefits from the rain, can benefit from the tailwind as well in certain situations situations of course and um, has the option to trick room which Sashin doesn't have and gives the team a little bit more flexibility obviously I take an advantage of the the psychic train as well that you can bring with the indeed he does help out a bunch um, but the team overall I've had a lot of fun with it today so do let me know if you try it out uh, down in the comment section below what your thoughts are on it but we'll wrap things up there friends thank you so much as always for tuning into today's episode hope you have a great rest of your day enjoy your weekend and we'll be back on Monday with more VGC series 10 content so until then and friends take care of yourselves and bye bye